Our mining done efficient and smelting made optimal. Make your factory thrive with production, thanks to a solid supply of resources. Learn how to build, upgrade and expand the most important section of your factory in the most efficient way. We'll start from pathetic stone furnaces, go through steel and electric to at the end achieve perfection with diagonal blueprints and beacons. Feel free to use sections, blueprints and subtitles. But without any further ado, let's start from the rocks. To start smelting anything in Factorio, you need furnace and fuel. Even so, you start with one furnace and two wood, it's far from enough to start a factory. This is why you have to look for coal rocks. They look like normal rocks, but they are bigger. However, you can also look at the tooltip to see if it's a coal rock or just a regular one. We want to find as many as possible, since they will provide us with easy source of stone for furnaces and coal for fuel. Rocks usually appear in drier regions. Like like a desert or savanna. So if you started in a forest, there is lower chance of finding them. In that case, you can help yourself with a deconstruction planner. Simply press Alt D and mark the area around you. If you find core rocks, you will see core near your cursor. Hand mining is not the solution in any automation game, so we should use drills to expand. There are five resources which you can mine. Iron is used in most recipes, especially in the early game. Copper is the second most basic material also used in many recipes. Coal is the source of fuel for boilers, furnaces and few recipes. Stone is the least useful resource, yet it's still essential for certain recipes. Moreover, after smelting into bricks, you can transform it into walls, which appeal to people for some reason. And the last one is uranium, which is a late game resource for the nuclear power plant. It's a bit complicated, so I explained the nuclear power in my other tutorial. With this basic knowledge, you're on a good path to become pro in factory smelting. In the early game, you don't have access to fancy robots building fancy blueprints, so you have to start from Burner City. It's extremely simple design of one furnace and one miner. This is the best starting design, because it's very easy to build and cheap to craft. It requires just some stone and iron. Of course, it's Factorio. So turning this small peepee -pee sadness into a burner city is your duty. At the beginning, focus on mining iron. Since each drill requires 9 iron plates for crafting, you should also place a few miners on stone to craft furnaces. But do it when you run out of stone from core rocks you mined before. 4 miners will be more than enough. To fuel the city, you also need a lot of coal. The starting coal from coal rocks not gonna last forever, so you should build a coal snake. When you place burner drills on coal with outputs fitting each other, you can utilize their internal storage for mined coal. Just hold Ctrl left mouse button to quickly take coal out of the machines and then hold Z to distribute it in your burner city. At the very end you should place some miners on copper. However, you don't need to rush with it, since you don't need copper in the very beginning. Place your first copper miner when you have enough iron, coal and stone. With smelted copper you can craft red science packs and progress through research. Ok, to give you some indicator when your burner city is ready, you should have 10 iron miners, 6 copper miners, 16 coal miners and just 4 stone miners. After that point you can focus on expanding with electricity. You of course don't have to follow those numbers exactly, but more likely use them as a suggestion. There are two types of drills in Factorio, electric and burner. Even so, burners are good for the first hour or so, you shouldn't expand with them too much. And switch to electric as soon as you make your first power plant. The main reason for that is automation. With electric drills you don't have to run around like headless chicken hand feeding your drills. And instead you can focus on growing your factory. Another important reason for a switch is pollution. Electric setup produces around 2 times more resource than burners for the same amount of pollution. So quick switch to eco solution will save you from unpleasant neighbors visiting you in the beginning. There is also no use for burner drills in the end game so all resources spent on them will be wasted. On the other hand, the electric miners will last you the whole game. In the end game, you will just fill them with modules and surround them with beacons for extra upgrade. 
so electric miners are better, but placing them the same way as your burner drills killed the whole point of automation. To build your first mining setup you have to use belts, however belts have limited throughput which you have to respect. The yellow transport belt can transfer up to 15 items per second, you can see it on the tooltip. To calculate how many miners will be sufficient to fill the whole belt, you just have to multiply that number by 2. So 30 miners for tier 1 belts, 60 miners to fill tier 2 belts and whooping 90 miners for tier 3 belts. There is a lot of counting involved if you want to be efficient with mining. But if you also want to be effective, you can simply use the construction planner. I remind you the shortcut. Alt D. With this you can just mark your miners and see how many you already built. When you are building miners you also have to respect the sides of the belt. Because if you put 20 miners on one side and 10 on the other side you will end up with idle miners and partially empty belt. Because only one side will be fully used. In this game it's always better to build too much than not enough. The same goes with miners. So feel free to build a bit more miners than 30 per belt and just compress them with splitters at the very end. It will make sure that you utilize as much ore as possible. In the late game you can throw those numbers out of the window because of productivity bonus. Based on your research level, you require less and less miners per each belt, to a point that you will be forced to use direct terrain mining. There are many ways to build your miners. The simplest and cheapest way is to build lines of miners and lines of power poles between them. It's easy and fast, but it also results in the least amount of miners on the patch. I myself prefer this design, since it's cheap and allows you to fit more miners. You build it by placing a line of miners, line of two miners and two power poles repeated multiple times, and another line of miners. The most compact solution requires use of underground belts, so it's a bit more expensive than previous ones. However, it's extremely quickly to build with snap to grid blueprints and bots, so it's a good choice for mid and even late game. With setup miners it's time to smelt the ore. The best way to do it is by using smelting columns. There are multiple designs but will go with in my opinion the best one. The smelting array is easy to expand since you just copy and paste the existing column and connect only the ore. Because coal is already connected. This is the most popular design thanks to being cheap and simple to construct. I can literally build it in just 2 minutes. I mean I think I can. Uh, let me check. Ok, this is the actual time to build it. You see, it's quick. However, let's focus on understanding the construction of this smelter instead of speedrunning it or brainlessly copying it with the blueprint. By the way, blueprint in the description. Here are the resources you're gonna need to build a single column. You can do a screenshot of it, but there is no need for that. You start the construction by placing 48 furnaces, so 24 furnaces on one side, then 3 tiles of spacing and another 24 furnaces on the other side. There is no logical explanation for this number, you just have to learn 48 by heart. You know, even so Factorio is from Czech Republic, they clearly took wrong inspiration from the imperial measurement system when it comes to smelters. Or they did a little bit of trolling, nobody knows. After you build the furnaces, you have to place the belts. Just put them one tile away from furnaces in the middle of the column. You also need two belts on the outside, which will work as an input to furnaces. Also, if one tile of space between furnaces and belt. Now place the inserters. If it's your first smelting column and you struggle with resources for inserters, you should only build them for input, because each furnace has a buffer of 100 place, so you can smelt the resources and use those to craft more inserters. However, if you have resources, it's quicker to build input and output at the same time. You can do it by pressing left mouse button and while holding it, you move it in a U shape. 
This way you can build extremely quickly. After you build inserters, you have to add the powerful spaghetti. With all this done, it's time for the brain of the smelting column, which is simply two splitters facing each other with belts going for furnace inputs. I will put some ore and coal to visualize how it works. It splits belts in a way that half of belt is filled with ore and half is filled with coal, so furnaces have fuel and resource to smelt. Top splitter should be provided with ore from your miners, connected via well-cooked spaghetti. When it comes to bottom splitter, you should supply it with coal. Start by dragging a belt two tiles under the bottom splitter, then remove the outside undergrounds. Next, place a splitter and connect it with a belt, and then provide it with your coal miners via spaghetti. You don't need to build the coal supply the exactly same way, just keep the core idea the same. After you finish, press Alt B and select the whole construction. In the save window, select snap to grid and switch to relative. Or screw this and take the blueprint from the video description after you learn how to build it. Thanks to the blueprint, you can plan the whole smelting array with ease. The previous design works well for iron, copper and even for stone, when you cut it in half to 24 furnaces, since stone smelts two times faster. However, when it comes to steel, it's a different story, because a single still requires 16 seconds of smelting, when normal resource requires 3.2 seconds, which is a nice even number. But jokes aside, it's qualified nerd moment now. To craft one steel plate, you need 5 iron plates, and 5 iron plates require 3.2 seconds times 5 to craft, which is exactly 16 seconds. That's mean one furnace making iron plates can supply exactly one furnace making steel. So we can go with direct furnace to furnace feeding. We will start with favorite speedrunner's design and then I will show you something simpler. You need those resources to build this. Start by building two lines of 24 furnaces with one tile between them. Then place output belt on the right and input belt on the left. To place inserters faster, first build all the output inserters as input, because this belt will also act as fuel supply. Next, drag your mouse from the very left to build supply inserter. Transfer inserter and change one of the input inserters into output. Do it in a U shape to build it as fast as Factorio Pros. Next, supply everything with coal. We want to have coal only on one side, so use inserter for the left belt and splitter for the right belt. This way, all furnaces will be supplied with coal. Also, you should supply all the inserters with electricity. Now, you have to connect iron input at the very top. We want to put it only on one side of the belt so make it one tile longer. Now, after I speed up the game, you can see that all furnaces are working. However, we'll upgrade them to faster steel furnaces in the near future. You see, now half of the furnaces are not working. That's because half belt can supply only 24 stone furnaces or 12 steel furnaces. To fix that, count 12 furnaces with the construction planner and build splitter after it. Then finish everything with another supply belt. At the input, you should also split your ores, but respect the belt sides. With all furnaces working, we can build a simple buffer. Use underground at maximum distance to separate steel from coal. Next, use two fast inserters as input to the chest and two inserters as output. Place the belt in this way, so you will have steel on both sides. With this, your steel maker is done. To expand it, just make a blueprint and place a few more. While connecting outputs, use the splitter. That steel smelter was a lot of stuff to remember, so if you are a smooth brain engineer, you can make it simpler. Just place two normal smelting columns next to each other. Connect first column to iron ore deposit. Next, change the output belt to go up by placing belt over it. At the end, connect it with input for the next smelting column. This way you have a nice steel smelter without too much thinking. I can definitely recommend this approach. 30 miners can supply a single smelting column with ore, but when it comes to coal, it's way more efficient. With a full belt of coal, you can supply 666 furnaces, which is more than 13 smelting columns, or it's a little bit more than two coal miners per one smelting column. So we can build a huge smelting array without worrying about coal throughput. However, when you are starting with smelting, it's nice to put first coal by hand 
just hold Z and move your mouse around. Thanks to this trick, you'll kickstart your smelting column way faster. Because even so, furnaces don't require a lot of coal, they have an inside buffer of 5 coal, and filling it at the beginning will take some time. Also, I think it's worth to mention that inserters in Factorio are smart, and they will only take resources which are needed. This is why we are mixing ore with coal on a single belt. Talking about smart thing, if you are using the same belt for power plant and smelting column, make sure to set up a priority split to don't run out of power, because recovering from a blackout is hard. At some point your factory will become so huge that those simple smelters won't be enough. But instead of tearing everything down, you can upgrade it by placing over better belts and steel furnaces double the speed of production. Upgrade materials are not complicated to make, just some bricks with steel and red belts are literally some extra iron. You should start upgrading your smelters when your existing array is not producing enough plates for your factory and you have enough rough ore to support faster smelting. There is literally no point in upgrading your column if you are still going to fit it with a single yellow belt. When you decide for an upgrade, you can start by upgrading the input belts only for the first half of the smelter, because the capacity of yellow belt will be enough for the remaining core. Also, you can upgrade just the bottom half of the output belt and split it to two yellow belts at the end, because red belt is two times faster than the yellow one. The same goes for input, so instead of upgrading the input spaghetti belt to red one, simply bring another yellow belt. You don't need to upgrade the splitter, just connect the belts. Electric furnaces are bigger and upgrading them is not that easy. You can of course build the hipster design from the very beginning, which can be upgraded to bigger electric smelter later. But the amount of struggle which is needed to build it in the early game is, in my opinion, not worth it. Since in the late game, you can just tear down everything with bots and quickly build a better design or nuke it. Your starting ores will last you a few hours, so you should look for new ore patches quite early. The best way to do it is to invest in radars. After you place them, then you scan the area around them and reveal them up. The area is limited, but it might be enough. If not, run around and find the ores on your own. If the ore patch is close by, let's say up to 200 or 300 tiles, you can bring the ore to the base with belts. But if the distance is longer, then you should use train because it will be cheaper and you will be able to use the same rail for multiple outposts. After you build the miners, you should either compress them if you want to transfer them via belts or balance them if you want to use trains. Compressor is basically a bunch of priority splitters put together with a single lane balancer in the corner. I'm not gonna explain it too much, because trains are better. Whenever you build a train station, you should include buffer chests. It will slowly fill up and when train come in, it will be loaded in no time, especially when you upgrade to fast or stack inserters. You should do the same for output station, so there will be a buffer when train is on the way. To load your trains evenly, you should use a belt balancer instead of compressor. Thanks to it, all train wagons will be loaded equally, and if you use enough splitters, also chests will be loaded equally for maximum loading speed. But more about trains in my different tutorial. After you build the outpost, remember to defend it with turrets, because it will produce a lot of pollution, and nearby natives might want to have a word with you. In addition to turrets, you should also place a radar, so you know how your mining outpost is performing, and you will see what is that beeping. Ah. Steel furnaces are good and fast, however, they produce a lot of pollution and require coal to operate, unlike their electric friends. You can be tempted to switch as soon as possible, but actually, electric furnaces produce more pollution when you include your steam power plant. So, if you closed every nuclear power plant for some stupid reason and you don't have source to provide you with clean electricity, there is simply no point in switching to electric furnaces. However, if you have a steady source, source of clean nuclear or solar power and your factory is on a good late game stage, it's a good time for a switch. 
Switch. Electric furnaces have two module slots and filling them with productivity modules will increase your plate's yield per each rough hour. However, it comes at the price of producing more pollution and consuming more electricity. So there is no point in rushing it. A better thing to do is to research mining productivity. You don't need to change anything in your mining design because your miners will just produce extra ore from time to time. You can adjust the amount of miners per line, but it's better just keep them as they are, so when some miners run out of resources, the rest will fill the belt. Uranium is the late game ore, used in nuclear power plants and in negotiation tools. Mining it is a bit different than normal ore, because you need to supply your miners with sulfuric acid to make them work. You can either do it with underground pipes if it's close by, so around 200-300 ties. Or better way is to use a fluid wagon. There are two ways of supplying sulfuric acid with trains. One is to build a multi-purpose train which will deliver sulfuric acid and take away ore at the same time. Second way is to build two trains, one for sulfuric acid and one for ore. I myself prefer the second option because it's simply easier to set up. But you can pick yourself. Processing this resource is a long story. So I have in-depth video about this whole topic. We started talking about the late game, so it's time to mention you one of the most iconic late game thing, which is a direct mining to a train. When your base is so huge that you start to struggle with UPSs and you have so much mining productivity that few miners can fill the whole blue belt, you can consider building a different type of mining outpost. Just lay down the rails directly on the ore patch, put some miners and beacons, fill everything with speed modules and you have the fastest and the most UPS friendly mining solution. It's the extreme late game thing, so I'm not sure if you've ever used it, but I have other trick which you should definitely use. All ores in Factorio are getting richer and richer over distance, so this ore near your respawn contains only a little bit of ore. But when you go away from your respawn point you can expect more ores. Since you cannot change your respawn point, it's always good to have some base here. But if you want to build a huge mega base, you should consider building a train to the new world. You might be forced to persuade the local wildlife to build a train track, but after you clear the area around it, you don't need to build any turrets or walls, because rails don't produce pollution, so it won't trigger any natives. There is no answer how long should be the rail. Simply look at the nearby ores and if you are ready, satisfied with the quantity of resources, just start a new base. If you don't want to move from your original base to the new world, you can just build a mining outpost far away from your base, but in this case you have to make a very good defenses. Also, training with supplies like repair packs or walls is kind of necessary, because you'll be far away and in case of attack it won't be an option to fix the outpost by hand. With sufficient amount of rough resources and a nice base with clean electricity, you can finally switch to something better than electric furnaces, to a beacon electric furnaces. When you fill your furnaces with productivity modules tier 3 and surround them with speed moduled beacons, you achieve the peak of engineering when it comes to smelting. Beacons allow you to build the most compact design and you'll get the extra 20% of plates from productivity modules. Those are two examples of bacon beacon smelters, but you can come up with your own design. At this stage you can also consider building a direct train to train smelter. It's a perfect solution for huge mega bases, where every UPS counts. If you struggle to build something decent, you can use car as a bigger chest. It will allow you to come up with more creative designs. I would also like to show you a few examples of different smelters, so it will be even easier for you to come up with something what fits you the most. Here are two most basic smelters from the beginning, but you already know them. So there are different approaches to the same 48 furnaces setup. However, you don't need to limit yourself to a line. Circle is also an option. Another option is a diagonal design like this one, or like that one. Here are some other designs I find in my safe or in multiplayer games. So with this inspiration you can build something yourself or copy the blueprint from the video description. Up to you! 
Now you have all the knowledge about smelting in Factorio. But you know shit about oil. You can change this by watching my oil tutorial, which will explain you everything about this liquid dollar which is extracted miles from the underground. Also, I want to thank my patrons like Pequas3 who support me, even with my most terrible schedule. Thank you guys and thank you for watching. Oh, rock, nice. Wait, 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 wait.